All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at the arm. So we're going to look at a lot of the muscles of the arm. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So if we start right here, we're going to have this muscle right here. This is called the pectoralis major. So this is the pectoralis major right here. And again, we're going to keep saying the function so we can get that drilled into you guys' head. The pectoralis major, it flexes the whole arm at the shoulder joint. It adducts at the shoulder joint and it also does medial rotation at the shoulder joint. Okay, so that's the pectoralis major. Right here, this big superficial muscle right here, this is called the deltoid, and there's three heads, anterior, middle, and posterior head of the deltoid. Now the deltoid muscle, in general, it does abduction at the shoulder joint, but obviously, you have three heads, so the anterior head could technically do flexion at the shoulder joint, the lateral head could do abduction, and the rear head of the deltoid could do extension at the shoulder joint. So that's something that you could technically say, but in general, we usually just say deltoid muscle abduction at the shoulder joint, okay? Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn it over. All right, so now we're gonna take a look here. This is a deep muscle. You can see this cut, this cut chunk of muscle right here. This is the trapezius muscle, the superior trapezius. But underneath this, uh, this thick trapezius muscle, we have the supraspinatus that sits in the supraspinous fossa. And it actually inserts to with the, uh, the supraspinous tendon and it helps to be able to do abduction at the shoulder. So it does abduction at the shoulder. So again, supraspinatus muscle right here does abduction at the shoulder joint. All right, so if I turn a little bit here again, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the deltoid muscle off so we can see this big superficial muscle. I'm gonna take that off here so that we can see some of these deeper muscles again. So if you look here, I got this big, big chunk of muscle all right here, all this big chunk of muscle. This is all the infraspinatus. And the infraspinatus, again, it laterally rotates, okay? So it helps to be able to externally rotate or pull the arm back or the humerus back, right? So that's what its design is, is to be able to do lateral rotation or external rotation. This muscle right here that we can see, this is actually going to be the teres minor. So this is the teres minor, and the teres minor does the same thing as the infraspinatus. It does lateral rotation or external rotation of the shoulder. So that means that the infraspinatus and the teres minor are synergist to each other for that action. And then if you look here, we got another big chunk of muscle right here. This is called the teres major. And again, the teres major does extension at the shoulder joint. It does medial rotation and it also does extension at the shoulder joint. So if you think about it, again, he does medial rotation the teres minor and infraspinatus does lateral rotation, so these two are antagonists to one another for that action. Okay, so again, infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this guy over so we can take a look at two more muscles here, actually three more muscles. All right guys, so now we're on the anterior side of the scapula. So if you look here, we have this muscle right here sitting in the subscapular fossa. This is called the subscapularis, and the subscapularis does medial rotation. So it helps to do internal rotation, pull the arm basically forward, right, at that shoulder joint. All right, so that's, again, that is the subscapularis. You can see a tiny chunk here of the latissimus dorsi, because it's going to go insert onto the humerus here. You can see the, the little chunk of the latissimus dorsi right there. And then you can see the uh, chunk here of the teres major, too. So, again, you got subscapularis. And then you got latissimus dorsi. And again, latissimus dorsi does extension at the shoulder joint, he does medial rotation at the shoulder joint, and he does adduction at the shoulder joint. So he's a synergist for all of those actions with the teres major. All right? <clears throat> and he'd also be a synergist to the subscapularis because these two both medially rotate. All right. Another muscle that attaches up here at the coracoid process, this is actually going to be called the coracobrachialis. So here you got the coracobrachialis muscle right there. So the coracobrachialis runs kind of all the way down here, and what it helps to do is, helps to be able to flex the whole arm at the shoulder joint, and it does adduction at the shoulder joint. Okay, so the coracobrachialis, again, does flexion at the shoulder joint, and it does adduction at the shoulder joint. So with that taken into consideration, the coracobrachialis could be a synergist to the latissimus dorsi, 
and it could be a synergist to the teres major because all three of these muscles do, specifically adduction, okay? And again, you can see a chunk of the pectoralis major. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna take a look at the uh, biceps muscles. All right, so let's take a look here at the uh, biceps muscle. So if you can see here, we have a good chunk of the biceps brachii muscle. It's actually two heads. There's a short head and then there's a long head. I'm gonna show you the long head in a better view. But here we have the short head, and the short head actually comes up here and attaches to the uh, coracoid process up there. So that's one of the attachment sites of it. All right, and then if you look, so that's actually where the origin would be. And so that's going to be the short head of the biceps, right? There is a long head of the biceps and it attaches up there at what's called the supraglenoid tubercle. But we're just gonna, we're gonna categorize them as just, just one big muscle of the biceps brachii. And in general, this whole muscle as a group works together to do flexion at the elbow or flexion of the whole forearm. And then it also does supination of the palms where it helps to be able to hold, like think about it, holding a bowl of soup. Right, and pronation is dumping a bowl of soup. All right, so that's what it helps to be able to do. So again, flexion of the forearm or flexion at the elbow, and it does supination of the palm. And as you can see here, we can still see the coracobrachialis right there. And again, flexion at the shoulder joint for this guy and adduction at the shoulder joint for him. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over till we can see the, uh, a better view of the brachialis and the uh, long head of the biceps brachii. All right, so if we look here, we can see this right here, this one on the outside here. This is the long head of the biceps. And again, we already know, we already said what it does. We're gonna treat them as a group of the biceps break guy. It does flexion of the forearm and supination of the palm, okay? And if we look here, this is the brachialis muscle. This is the brachialis. And the brachialis muscle helps to be able to do flexion of the forearm or flexion at the elbow. So if you think about it, the brachialis muscle is a synergist to the biceps brachii for flexion of the former flexion at the elbow okay so that covers these bicep muscles right there now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over to the posterior part of the arm so that we can see the tricep muscles all right so if we look here we have three heads of the tricep this one right here is the lateral head of the triceps so this one right here is the lateral head of the triceps this one right here is the long head of the triceps and then this one right here is the short head or the medial head of the triceps. All of these make up what's called the triceps brachii, right? So the triceps brachii help to be able to do what's called extension at the elbow or extension of the forearm. There's another muscle that's a tiny little one down here. It's called the anconius. And the anconius also does extension at the elbow or extension of the forearm. So if you think about it, the anconius, the triceps brachii muscles are both, all of them are antagonists to the biceps brachii and the brachialis for these guys doing extension at the forearm and the uh, bicep muscles doing flexion at the forearm. So these two guys are going to be antagonists to one another. Whereas the triceps brachii and the anconius would be synergists to one another. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the muscles of the forearm, the extensor side. So if you see here, we have this muscle right here first. This is called the brachioradialis. So that's the brachioradialis. And the brachioradialis does flexion at the uh, flexion of the forearm or flexion at the elbow joint. I'm going to turn a little bit. We have the extensor carpi radialis longus right there. And as you can tell by the name, it extends, carpi extends the wrist. So extensor carpi radialis longus, it extends the wrist. Lo and behold, here is extensor carpi radialis brevis. It also extends the wrist. So longus just means it's a lot longer, brevis means it's shorter. Turn it over here. This is the extensor digitorum, it says the name, it extends the digits. This is extensor digiti mini me. Okay, extends the digits. And this right here is going to be the extensor carpi ulnaris. All right, so it extends the wrist. So that covers all the muscles on the extensor side. What we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and we're going to cover the flexor side. All right, guys, so if you look right here, we have the flexor side. So this is going to be called the pronator teres, and he pronates the palm. So again, remember, if you hold the bowl soup, it's supination. If you dump the bowl soup, it's pronation. So he does pronation of the palm. So that's the pronator teres. Right here next to him is going to be the flexor carpi radialis. So it flexes the wrist. 
Next to him is the palmaris longus, and the palmaris longus also flexes the wrist. And we have one more over here. This is called the flexor carpi ulnaris, and this one also flexes the wrist. Now, we have another set of muscles that I want to cover that are deeper here. I'm going to take this off here. All right, guys, so now we're going to take a look here at the deeper parts. So if you look here, this is the flexor digitorum superficialis. It's all this muscle right here, okay? And to get to him, we had to take off all this layers that we just showed you right here. So we had to take off the pronator teres, we had to take off the uh, flexor carpi radialis, and we had to take off the palmaris longus. So if I kind of take that off again, you can see there the flexor digitorum superficialis. And the flexor digitorum superficialis flexes the digits and then eventually the wrist, okay? So if you think about it, he is a synergist to the flexor carpi radialis. He's also a synergist to the flexor carpi linearis for flexion at the wrist, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flexor digitorum superficialis off so that we can see the deeper layers here. This right here, guys, is the flexor pollicis longus right there. So flexor pollicis longus. Then if you look over here, this is going to be the flexor digitorum profundus right there. So again, we got the flexor pollicis longus, which flexes the pollex. And then over here, we got the flexor digitorum profundus, which flexes the digits, okay? So these two muscles right here are gonna be deep to that muscle that we just talked about, being the flexor digitorum superficialis. Then I'm gonna turn it over here more, and you can see this really, really deep muscle right here. This is called the supinator. And the supinator, like we said, it supinates the palm, so it helps to hold the bowl of soup, okay? So that's the supinator muscle right there. And if you think about it, the supinator is a synergist to the biceps brachii, right, for supination at the palm and it's going to be an antagonist to the pronator teres, which pronates the palm. There is another pronator muscle that you can't see on this. It's called the pronator quadratus. It's gonna be closer down here to the wrist region, um, but that's another muscle. So you could also say an antagonist to the supinator is not only the pronator teres, but the pronator quadratus. All right, guys, so now we're gonna take a look here at the thumb. These are the thenar muscles where the thenar eminence is. If you look here, we got this tiny little muscle right here. That's gonna be the opponent's pollicis right there. This muscle right here is going to be the abductor pollicis brevis. All right, this one right here is going to be the flexor pollicis brevis right there, flexor pollicis brevis, and then 30 right there is gonna be the adductor pollicis brevis, and this covers the thenar muscles right there. All right, guys, so now we're gonna look over here at the hypothenar muscles. So over here, we have this one right here. This is the opponent's digiti minimi right there. And then this one right here is going to be the abductor digiti minimi. And if I flip it inwards in here, this last one right there is going to be the flexor digiti minimi. All right, guys, so that gives us basically an overall uh, look at the entire arm and all the muscles that it actually contains.